Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Dancing. Chaos March. 12th of October 3057. It might be the last dropship on Gan Sing, their final chance. Wrenching at the controls of her Jägermech, Lieutenant Kelly Van Lu struggled forward against the tangled jungle that covered most of the continent of Pandora. Alarms wailed in her ears. Broken fronds streaked her ferroglass shield with green smears as sporadic laser fire burned through the leafy canopy around her. Ruby bright energy splashed armor from her battle mech's shoulders, its arms, its chest. She tasted the warm, dank air, poorly filtered by her cockpit's life support system. Missiles corkscrewed in from her right, slamming into a palisade of majestic cypress and thick, bold banyan strung with creeping vines. A few warheads dropped low against her legs, shredding the angular guards that protected her knee joints and lower actuators. Her stride hitched, stumbled, and then caught up as she shouldered her way into a marshy glade. Planting her spade-shaped feet into the loamy black soil, Kelly checked her hood and found Hauptman Roland Mills, her company commander in the 3rd Donegal Guards, and her friend, still limping along half a click behind, well out of danger. Tightening up on her triggers, she snapped up both long-barreled arms and went looking for trouble. Long licks of bright yellow flame flashed out of her Yeg's auto cannon as she spent hundreds of rounds into the greenery, implementing her own plan of deforestation. Twenty mills, riding over powerful ultra-class Nova 50s. The hot metal chewed through thick vines, splintered tree branches into kindling, and rained pieces of shredded fronds over the ground. The powerful, cutting streams walked destructive lines in a narrow arc, reaching out, searching for either of the two mechs in between her and the dropship. She found the missile casting dervish when a leafy screen of branches exploded under her devastating assault. Autocannon slugs hammered in against its chest, as if drawn by the gauntlet and sword set over a Davian sunburst. The insignia was one Kelly knew well, had called an ally only a few days before, but none of that mattered now. In scant seconds, the proud crest of the FedCom Corps had been chiseled away to a battered ghost of its former glory. Too late to stop. The dervish's chest caved inward over the fusion reactor. Golden fire blossomed inside the mangled cavity. It spread quickly. The mech's head split open as the warrior ejected, rocketing up and away from the dying machine. It was the last thing Kelly saw before the fusion bright flare consumed the battle mech. The force of the explosion blasted apart trees and scorched a great deal of underbrush to instant cinders. It rocked her Jaeger mech back on its heels as the ground trembled violently. Kelly! Roland's voice crackled to life over the comm system. Flash and smoke near your position. Can you see it? Not anymore. She said, voice activated Mike, picking up her reply. She blinked away the after effects of the glare. A few curly strands of her platinum blonde hair tickled along the side of her face. No reaching them, though, through the heavy neuro helmet she wore. But a practiced head shake matted them against the sweat on her forehead. Whatever had been sniping at her with lasers had taken off. The dervish was also gone, except for pieces and parts scattered around a smoking crater. A leg, severed mid-femur, leaned up against a bamboo thicket. There was a titanium strut impaled through a nearby banyan. A few determined licks of flame crawled along the scorched trunks of some ironwood, but she doubted it would go much farther. The jungle was far too wet from the recent days of rain. Kelly throttled forward, cautiously. Suddenly, new warning screamed for attention as a rust-painted vindicator shoved its way through the bamboo, stepping out into the hole in the jungle cleared by the explosion. She brought up her auto cannon, but the wailing cut off as the other mech dropped its targeting lock and paused. 
ready, but waiting. An orange and black tiger striping covered half of the battle mech's chest, like a pelt draped over one shoulder, but no insignia that she could see. Kelly paused, fingers caressing her triggers. The Vindicator took advantage of her hesitation and dove back into the jungle thicket, northeast, toward the dropship. The last one. Roland had given her a moment to collect herself. One of ours, or one of theirs? He asked now. Ran across one of both, she said, then sighed. It was a guardian, she admitted, swallowing a sour taste. First fed calm. Damn it, Kay. He didn't sound mad at her, but at the fates in general. They had tried so hard not to engage the Guardians. Well, that tears it. It was Roland's one fault, Kelly thought, holding on to an idea of us versus them, or Federated Commonwealth versus the Marek Liao Alliance. That might have been true six months ago, or even six weeks, when the Alliance offensive was chewing through the Sana March. But Katrina Verdamt Steiner tanked that idea when she called home all Lyran commands, and the local defense network fell completely apart. So bad, in fact, that a few strugglers got left behind in the confusion, including 7th Company of the 3rd Don Eagle Guards. Roland's company had been deployed to Gan Singh to try and coordinate with the 1st Fedcom RCT. Only the Guardians were already gone. All they found were a few forgotten warriors, cast-offs, or AWOL didn't matter butting heads with local militia turned mercenary. The Don Eagle Guards Company either missed the recall order, or it had never been sent, once General Hammerskold decided to cut his losses and return to Lyran space. Kelly could only wish him a prime location, in the deepest circle of hell. A new silhouette flashed across her tactical screen as Roland limped his penetrator up from behind. It looked quite a mess with its right leg fused into an awkward steel crutch and several lengths of mossy vines draped over its ruined arms. Well, what are we waiting for? He asked. Let's go, Kay. She very nearly smiled at his forced esprit de corps. But six dead friends and four MIA in the last five days was enough to sour anyone's mood. From city to spaceport to remote landing zone, Seventh Company had tried to make rendezvous with any number of outbound dropships, always too late. Always forced back by Capellan or mercenary outfits with greater firepower, or a larger expense account. But not this time, she promised herself. Throttling forward into an easy walk, she took the lead against his best speed of 30 km per hour. They struck along the trail blazed by the fleeing Vindicator and crossed their fingers. For the next 10 minutes their luck held. No weapons sniped at them from the dense jungle. Roland pushed his penetrator up towards 40 miles per hour as the trail made for easier travel. Kelly began to hope. Think we can afford passage? She asked. Neither of them speculated the dropship captain might call allegiance to any one faction of Gan Singh's three-sided battle. These days, it seemed every man for himself was a predictable situation. We can barter against any ransom paid by the Third Don Eagle. We can deal away what's left of the Penetrator. He'd never once threatened to put a debt against her Jägermech. The Penetrator was a newer and much more valuable machine but hers had been in the Van Lu family for three generations. Leased into Lyran service, but still hers. Roland would rather give up a piece of Lyran state property and suffer the reprisals than divorce her from a piece of family heritage. It was the kind of thing he did without thinking. And for that, if nothing else, Kelly would stick by her Hauptmann's side no matter what. That's what kept her anchored at his side when the sky fell in on them a moment later. There was very little warning. A glimpse of smoke through the tree canopy from one of the Pandora jungle's many logging slash burns. 
a tremble in the ground that might have been artillery fire. Might have been the first powerful flare of a dropship's fusion drives lighting off. A screen of ironwood bounced back their active sensors until the last moment. Then they pushed through and into the chaos of battle. The dropship was there all right, 90 meters high, its drive flare washing its underside in white hot fire. It squatted on the blackened fields of a deforested plateau, seeker class, and painted a familiar blue-gray. Kelly Van Loo needed only the briefest glance to recognize the shamrock crest of the Don Eagle Guards and the scales of justice that were the personal insignia of 3rd Regiment. A good thing because a brief glance was all she got before a crossfire of lasers and autocannon converged on her location. The lasers scorched the soil at her feet, while hard-hitting slugs beat a damaging tattoo across her Yeg's lower waist. The fire had come from two machines, painted the blue and gold of Federated Commonwealth RCTs, a behemoth assault tank, and an enforcer. Their second salvos went after a panther, painted dark cerulean blue, nothing she recognized. Another mercenary. All told, there seemed to be about a dozen mechs, and half that number in vehicles jousting over the black scorched ground. The dropship laid out suppression fire from its upper weapon bays. PPCs stabbed down at the non-allied battle mechs. They left the Fedcom warriors alone. Wave after wave of long-range missiles pounded machines into scrap, and battered the ground into ruin. More than a few, Kelly felt certain, would spread thunder munitions out into an ad hoc minefield. Kelly stepped in front of Rowling's penetrator, protecting it while holding her fire. Fedcom RCT forces had the advantage on the field, and so long as a mercenary did not target her, she would not target them. Dialing over to the protected frequencies of the third Don Eagle, she waited to see what sense her captain would make of the situation, listening in as he identified himself. Captain Mills! The reply washed out in static, as the lightning blasts of several PPCs ionized the local atmosphere, one from a nearby Caesar. It made communications difficult. We! No Mills listed! Deploy to Gansing! Deployed or not, Roland's name should be on the T-O and E. And Kelly recognized the voice even through the communications haze. Jolina? First mate Jolina Marksauer from the Lamprey. Jolly, it's Kay, Kelly, and Roland. You have two tired guardsmen here waiting for evac. Only one of the Lamprey's ramps was still down. Secondary bay. Big enough to hold a couple of battle mechs if they could get them on board. Kay? There was a pause. The nearby Caesar turned its weapons towards the guardsmen, and Kelly drilled out return fire with her autocannon as a way to shove it back. Kelly Van Lu! What in the Archon's name are you doing out here? Taking a sightseeing tour! What the hell does it look like? Kelly had heard the shock in the veteran Spacer's voice. How badly had wires been crossed if their own dropship crew did not know what forces were on planet? And where was the captain? We need a safe route to board and good covering fire. The same Vindicator from earlier dodged out of a tight situation and ran back towards Kelly's position. It hesitated as she drew her crosshairs over it, lighting it up then deliberately turned its back on her to challenge a pursuing Jenna. Over an open channel, an accented voice let them know, If you want a piece of the dropship, form up southwest and get ready to cover our drive. We're getting more than a piece of it, Roland said coldly. Stay out of our way, and we may find room for you. It wasn't exactly their call to make, of course, but Kelly approved. A tentative agreement was better than nothing. The dropship crew had already made some kind of pact with the Fedcom after all. Suit yourself then. It sounded more like a threat than an allowance. Then again, a hot battlefield was not the best place to make new friends. 
Kay! Jolina finally returned. Pull up northwest and come straight in at the ramp. We're out of here in five, so move it now! Straight at the ramp? She double-checked. Move it! The Caesar and a blue and gold painted Rommel also shifted in that direction, but not so close to prevent the guardsmen from moving. Roland led. Kelly stalked at his side, uneasy. It would be a lot easier if you broke a truce between the Fetcoms and the Mercs, she said over an unsecured channel. She warned off a too close panther, with a quick stream of light autocannon fire digging in at its feet. Make a second trip. Offer to send back a larger dropship. Not happening, Kelly. Way too much bad blood now. Kelly nodded. Captain feel the same way? Just get up here! Jelena ordered. We'll deal with the mercs next! It all hung on one word. Next. Not later. Or eventually. Also, with the obvious ceasefire arranged between the Lamprey and the Guardians, and the way in which the Mercs had tried to warn them, it all added up. After a week of non-stop fighting and several days of only being able to trust the men and women at her side, Kelly's paranoia had grown acute. Sharp enough to recognize the trap being laid out for them as they moved into range of the dropship's weapons. The last dropship on Gan Singh. Every man for himself. Roland! Roland! Fall back! Now! The dry, metallic taste of fear crept into her mouth. Slamming her throttles against their reverse stops, she backpedaled the Jägermenk. Almost too late. The dropship's weapons hammered down around their position as the Caesar and its support tank pushed forward. A pair of PPCs slashed at the legs of Kelly's mech. Aligned crystal steel melted and splattered over the already scorched earth of Gan Singh. Missiles hammered around the penetrator, but not so bad as the thunder-deployed minefield would have been had they walked into the lamprey's waiting embrace. Kelly! Roland staggered back, getting out from under the dropship's weapons. What? Castoffs, AWOL! No difference now. They've quit the Dun Eagle Guard, and they're not gonna want us telling tales about them! Treeline! Now! Her commanding officer was not one to bandy about with the order of rank when good advice was being given. Kelly let him slip behind her, and used her auto cannon to push back at the charging Caesar, buying them seconds only. With more battle mechs sliding up in their direction, the two guardsmen might have made a bad end of it, if not for the mercenaries. The Vindicator and a blackjack also painted with the Bengal pelt suddenly turned in their direction and sprinted inside the Caesar's line of retreat. They savaged the Rommel, blasting one set of armored treads clean off and freezing the turret inside a ruined track. Then they turned up from the Lamprey and came at the Caesar from behind while Kelly pushed forward to catch the RCT machine in a pincer. The 70-ton machine held on for a few long heartbeats, then broke for the dropship in a circuitous path that avoided the scattered thunders and left the slower mercenaries behind. All of the RCT machines fell back, heading for the final ramp. The scattered mercenaries, with two of their small number out of position now, let them go. Within moments, the dropship had buttoned up and was blasting itself clear of Gan Singh. Kelly Van Lu watched it rise into the air, soon losing itself behind a white tuft of clouds. Her breath came short and sharp and had nothing to do with the hot, humid air in the cockpit. It had everything to do with the hollow pit deep in her gut. If the Don Eagle guards could turn on each other, she wondered, what was left? for the now estranged Lyran Alliance and Federated Commonwealth. As if in answer to her silent question, her communications board lit up on an unsecured channel. We picked up some garbled transmissions. The accented voice from before. The Vindicator's mech warrior. 
With a moment to weigh it, he sounded Slavic. Maybe a native of Gan Sing. Maybe not. There may be a dropship set down on the northern coast of Pandora, near the city of Myros. The last dropship on Gan Sing, he said tiredly, as the remnant mercenaries gathered near their position. Of course it was. That was the nature of battle and politics after all. Always one more chance. If you were smart, or lucky, or both at the same time. Working together on this one might be in our common good, Kelly said, then waited for Roland to make the final call. It's a ten hour push, he said slowly. We can do it without sleep, if you can. Sounds like a plan. The Vindicator turned away to the northwest and struck out with a determined stride. Roland switched over to a secure frequency, one reserved for 3rd Donegal Guards, 7th Company. Maybe the last time they'd use it. Did they just become one of ours? He asked. Or did we become one of theirs? Right now, Kelly answered, I think we all belong to Pandora and Gan Singh. She pushed into an easy walk, keeping pace with the limping penetrator as she switched back to a common frequency. Maybe it's time to see what's left on this world, she said. What we have to work with.